Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelvin and welcome to my video tutorial for a Bali Teak Frame Scene Creator. Uh, this is an add-on for Photoshop. It's basically a mock-up scene creator. So the first thing you'll do is just download that product uh, zip file. Go ahead and unzip it. And then inside you'll find a, uh, a readme and then a Photoshop document. So this readme here, this will just have links to this tutorial video as well as my email address just in case you have any questions or comments. Uh, but the actual scene creator is this uh, Photoshop document. So I'll double click that to open it up in Photoshop. Okay, this is how it looks when you open it up. Um, you've got a few different uh, choices here for the frames. And then inside those uh, folders, there's uh, an option to turn on the horizontal version of that same frame. Uh, but basically this works just like most other scene creators. Uh, you'll just drop your image into this smart object and then choose which one uh, you want to use, which uh, orientation. Um, for this first one, I'm going to use a vertical orientation, 8x10. Uh, so I'll turn this one off here and turn on the uh, 8x10 frame. So I'll open that folder up. Uh, I'm going to use the vertical one, but I'll place my file inside this smart object. So I'll just double click this little page icon here to open up that smart object. And uh, it'll open it up as a new document. So uh, here's the uh, scene creator. When I double click that smart object, it opened up a new tab up here. And uh, this is where I'll place my image. So I'm going to turn off the uh, default image. And then I'll go to my uh, Finder or Explorer and uh, grab the uh, artwork I want to put in there. So my artwork is already uh, 8 by 10 exactly. And uh, here's the vertical one. Later on, I'll show you how to use a horizontal one. But uh, I'll just copy this and then paste it into Photoshop. So I'll copy it and then back to Photoshop. And then I'll paste it in. And uh, it's already lined up perfectly, so I don't have to do anything. Uh, when I'm happy with it, I can just X out of this uh, document tab. And when it asks if I want to save, uh, make sure you click Save or Yes. So here's what it looks like when your artwork is uh, inside the smart object. It automatically maps it onto this frame. And uh, now you can choose the background uh, and the shadow. So I'll show you the background first. Uh, that's this folder down here contains all the options for the background. Uh, so I'll open that up. And the, uh, this is the default one, is this flat custom color. And you can choose a custom color by opening up that folder. And as long as this is uh, enabled, as long as it's turned on, uh, you can open it up and you'll see this box here. If you double click that, it'll let you choose a color for the background. So I'll just double tap it. And uh, you can choose a color using the normal Photoshop color picker, or you can just go over to the image and just grab any key color that you want. And uh, let's see which looks good for this one. Maybe kind of a medium yellow is nice. Okay, that's pretty good. So I like this key color. So when I'm happy with it, I'll just press OK. Uh, and then I can close this up again so I can stay organized here. And I'll close up my frame folder too. And I'll open up the uh, shadow options uh, to control the shadow. All these shadows are much bigger than what you see on the screen, so you can move them around. Uh, so I'll choose a different shadow than the default one. So I'll turn the default one off. And maybe I'll try this one. And uh, to move a shadow, you can select the layer thumbnail. And you know it's selected because this uh, whole layer will get highlighted and there'll be a little white box around here. And as long as auto select is turned off, so if, th if that box is checked, make sure it's unchecked. And as long as this tool is selected, uh, you can move the shadow. If it doesn't move, uh, just double, double check that you've got this tool over here selected, the move tool. So we can also rotate it. I think I'll rotate it a little bit. So on a PC, it's going to be Control T, but on a Mac, it's Command T. And uh, as long as that uh, shadow is selected, that layer there is selected, and you press Command T, it'll bring up the uh, Universal Transform tool, and then you can rotate it just like that. Just remember when you're done with this tool to press Enter, otherwise it'll kind of lock you out. You won't be able to do anything else. So once it's positioned, maybe I'll rotate it a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. So once it's positioned there, I'll just press Enter. And uh, there we go, this scene is done. I'll just export this as a JPEG using the Save for Web dialog. So I'll go to File, Export, and then Save for Web. And it depends on your project, but the uh, maximum resolution for this mockup is uh, 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels, which will pretty much cover everything. And uh, as far as quality, you can actually get away with 
maybe 50 or even 60% quality and you won't even notice it uh, in the end result here and it'll save a lot of space. Uh, but if you were happy with this and you were all done, uh, you would just click save and then save it to your desktop and then use it uh, wherever you want. But for now, I'll cancel this and uh, I'll move on to the next project. So let me close these shadows and I'll actually turn that off. I'm still going to use the 8x10. I'm just going to use the horizontal version. So I'll open up that 8x10 uh, folder here. I'll uncheck the vertical one and check the horizontal one. And it uses the same smart object, so you'll have to put your artwork in sideways. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'll just open up this smart object again, just like before. And uh, it'll open a new tab. I'll turn off the vertical one. Actually, I'll go ahead and delete it, as well as I'll delete the uh, default image too. And I'll go back to my Finder or my Explorer and grab my horizontal image. That's this one here. It's uh, 8 by 10 exactly, just horizontal uh, orientation there. And I'll copy it and back to Photoshop and then I'll paste it in. And uh, it'll paste a bit sideways here. So I'll use the uh, Command T or Control T while the image is selected uh, to rotate it. So I'll hold Shift while I do this and that'll kind of stick it so when it reaches 90 degrees there it'll kind of stick. Uh, and then I can move it over and line it up. So these images, they've already got a little bit of a margin. It's just part of the image. But from here to here, it's 8 inches. And from here to here, it's 10 inches exactly. I just added that little margin there because I think it looks nice for uh, posters and paintings. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge it and align it. And uh, that looks pretty good. So when I'm done, I'll press Enter. Uh, and that'll uh, place it and exit that transform mode. Uh, and then I'm, it looks pretty good. I'll just double check the edge here. I think I want to move it up a little bit. So I'll use the arrow keys again. Okay, that looks good. So I'll, I will uh, X out of this tab here. And when it asks if I want to save, I'll do save. And there we go. It's placed the image in there. It looks pretty good. I think for this background, I'm going to do the concrete one. So I'll open up the background options and uh, uncheck the flat custom color. And then we'll turn on the uh, concrete floor and wall. And this is pretty bright. If you think this scene is a little bit too bright, uh, I did include an extra shadow that's up here in the lighting options. But if you're okay with the way it looks now, you can just go ahead and export it, save for web, however you want. Uh, but if you want it to be a little bit darker, just open up the lighting options and turn on that on off more shadow. And that places a shadow on top of the concrete and the uh, frame. So it gives it a little bit more realism with this particular scene. Um, but depends on your project. I think both uh, both ways makes it look pretty good. So that's pretty much it for placing your artwork. I think now I'm going to show you uh, how to move the frames around and scale them. So this is the frame that I'm using, the 8x10. And you can tell it's the one because it's uh, turned on. And if I turn it off, the one I see disappears there. So while this is selected, while this whole folder is selected, I can actually click uh, Command T or Control T to do the uh, universal transform tool. Uh, and then I can grab one of the corners. And while I hold, uh, I think in this case, it's going to be Shift and Control on a Mac. It's a little different keystroke for Windows, uh, but it'll let you constrain it so it doesn't get distorted when you scale it. But this way, I can shrink down the frame like that. And uh, when it's the right size, I can press Enter. And this is good if you want to make arrangements with more than one frame and you want to fit them onto this artboard. So once it's scaled down, uh, press enter to apply that transformation and then I can turn on another frame if I wanted to I think this one is good I can select that folder use the move tool and uh, move it over and uh, open that folder and if I wanted to place another artwork I can double click that smart object and uh, place a different uh, painting or poster in here and this is how you can make some kind of arrangements of different frames uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions. I think the best way to reach me is probably sending me an email. I put my email in that readme file. Uh, I'll usually get back to you within 24 hours or so. But uh, feel free to send me a message if you have any questions or comments. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.